Hi guys, this is Erica from Gokche Capital. Now before I begin, be sure to click subscribe and turn on the notification bell. In 2012, safety experts made a plan to tornado-proof the country. It failed. Why? We'll find out at the end of this video. But first, if you plan to build a house, chances are you will have to comply with the International Residential Code. And in today's video, we have the top things you should know. Number one, what is the International Residential Code? The International Residential Code, or IRC, is a comprehensive standalone residential code that establishes minimum safety and design regulations for one and two family dwellings. Number two, how is the IRC used? The International Code Council creates and updates the International Residential Code. The IRC on its own has no legal standing, but many states and local governments choose to adopt the code. And once the code is adopted by a jurisdiction, it becomes law. Now, it's also important to note that the International Code Council updates the IRC and all its other codes every three years. So new amendments are constantly coming out. But again, each amendment must be adopted by a jurisdiction before it becomes law. Number three, what does the International Residential Code apply to? The International Residential Code applies to new one and two family dwellings, as well as townhomes that are no taller than three stories. This is important to understand because there is another code, the International Building Code, which provides guidelines for every other kind of building. Number four, where is the International Residential Code used? Currently, the IRC is in use or adopted in 49 states, as well as the District of Columbia, Guam, Puerto Rico, and the U.S. Virgin Islands. So chances are, if you are building a single-family home in the U.S., unless your jurisdiction does not have a building code, you will need to comply with the International Residential Code. And number five, what are the benefits of the IRC? The International Residential Code, as with any building code, provides safety. This is because it gives prescriptive requirements that ensure safe, stable, and sanitary homes. The IRC also has the advantage of convenience in that it is drafted in an easy-to-use format. In a similar vein, it is designed to work with the rest of the Code Council's family of codes. Finally, the IRC has an open and honest code development process that draws upon the expertise of hundreds of plumbing, building, and safety experts across North America. But having said all this, you still may be wondering why the International Residential Code matters to you. Isn't it just something that gets in your way? In fact, wouldn't it be so much easier if you had the freedom to build as you wish? Well, building codes may very well seem to be a burden. That is, until you need them. Take, for example, the case of Joplin. On May 22, 2011, a tornado of enormous size landed in the middle of the Missouri City. At 5.35 p.m., the tornado dropped down near the end of 32nd Street and proceeded to build strength as it cut its way through South Joplin before finally lifting off at Diamond around 6.12 p.m. Although the event lasted only 45 minutes, by the time it was done, 161 people had lost their lives and 8,264 homes were destroyed or badly damaged. For the residents of Joplin, there was little solace in the aftermath except perhaps the scant comfort that comes with knowing nothing more could have been done. But the American Society of Civil Engineers knew otherwise, for we do in fact know how to protect homes from tornadoes. And so, in the wake of the Joplin tornado, the group proposed an ambitious goal. Change the way buildings are designed so that they can survive all but the most violent of storms. To this end, they proposed a few small but key updates to the next version of the International Building Codes. Number one, they said, all roofs should be tightly secured to walls and the walls to the foundation. And number two, all windows and doors should be strong enough to survive a hit by massive, fast-moving debris. By one estimate, these changes would add only an extra 3000 to the cost of new home construction. However, just after the American Society of Engineers started their work, they received a warning. The National Association of Home Builders would kill their entire proposal if the engineers applied their standards to homes as well as larger buildings. You see, for a proposed change to be approved by the International Code Council, it must first be endorsed by one of several organization committees. And industry representatives, such as the National Association of Home Builders, 
sit on these councils. It is a well-known fact that almost no code amendment will pass if it is blacklisted by the National Association of Home Builders. So the American Society of Civil Engineers caved. In the end, they did not propose new tornado safety amendments to the residential code, which meant that when the next major tornado hit, as it did in Kansas in 2021, us homeowners stood to lose everything. As one FEMA administrator put it, the code development process is always a tug-of-war between safety advocates and developers who want less red tape. This means that simple changes, which could save homes and lives, don't always get adopted. Even worse, many municipalities never even adopt the residential building code, meaning homeowners in these unregulated areas are potentially at risk when even a small storm hits. As our FEMA administrator put it, we just hope that it won't be that bad. Of course, sometimes it is that bad. And then, it is us who pay, all in the name of saving $3,000. But what do you think? Do you have any stories about residential building codes? Let us know in the comments. Did you like this video? You're going to love our Gokche Land Due Diligence program. We'll make you a land due diligence expert in just seven days. Check it out at gokchecapital.com slash glad. And while you're at our website, don't forget to explore our $1 down properties at gokchecapital.com slash listings. Finally, don't hesitate to reach out. You can email, call, or text, and we will respond as soon as possible. So thank you for listening and more to come.